Hello Redom family, welcome back to the channel. In this video today, as you can see the title, we're going to be diving in deep into the secret sex parties of the mega rich. I'm sure you can imagine nothing innocent is happening there and nothing vanilla is happening there but these people they take not being vanilla to another level entirely but without further ado let's get into it the hotel industry is a wild experience that helps you understand how disconnected the wildly wealthy are i've seen the darker side of humanity suicides murders spousal abuse human trafficking that shit stays with you for a long time. One weekend, a large group of around 60-ish people, they wanted to purchase out the entire hotel so they could just turn it into a giant orgy at the cost of our property with upwards of $250,000 for two nights at a time. That says you've got... And there's people starving. Welcome to planet Earth. ...money to spend. They left a nightmare room. Blood, feces, semen stains. One of my dull boys came up and was like, I've got a black light, I'm curious. He turned it on and I remember we like, we looked down and saw all the stains, we looked to the sides and saw them on the wall. At one point in the bathroom, we looked up and saw them all in the ceiling and we were just like, how, how do you do? Reptilians, I'm joking, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just joking, but. Do this, this is not human. Were you on the ceiling? Probably. <laughs> worked as an operations manager for around 10 plus years. I've worked in hotels where the average daily rate is anywhere from like $99 and then all the way up to boutique properties where the average cost is around $1,400 per night. In general, the higher up the price value, the more common it is to be treated like you're less than you. Typical. The people who are coming to visit you, famous pop stars, Russian oligarchs, they have a private plane that they get in a private vehicle. That's an island. Windows. <laughs> Sometimes they have security squads. They'll, they'll snap their fingers at them. Very large sense of entitlement where if they approach the desk, they're the only thing that exists to you in that moment. And that's what they came to expect from that level of entering a, a luxury hotel. Most people who visit boutique hotels are not coming for business. They're there for pleasure. There was a group of fabulously wealthy individuals. You can definitely get a sense of how much wealth they actually have when they're talking about things like buying a fleet of Boeings in the lobby casually. They would buy out this entire property. They were spending as much as a luxury wedding. And uh, it was basically a giant swingers orgy. We'd have people having sex in the pool, people laying on our wine bars naked, a couple having sex on the balcony in plain view. So you're looking up at it, quite an angle. And every single room would have a different theme and a safe word posted outside of the door. The one that stands out to me was there's a mermaid themed room. It was actually kind of impressive, the details they went, so it was very like under the sea vibe. There was the Wild West room. There was the straight up BDSM room. One couple we had to talk to, while they were naked. They would purposely wait to start having sex until housekeeping wanted to clean the room. They wanted somebody to watch. The day after what they the hell? Them, I got a call from housekeeping <laughs> saying that one of the showers was busted, and I go take a look at it, and they had hacksawed off the actual shower piece, the shower head, and attached a four foot long anal probe hose to it. Oh, hell no. Multiple settings on the other end. Oh, hell no. And uh, that was as disgusting as you can imagine. Uh, after all of the, uh, the drama and mental scarring that we put up with for this, this orgy buyout group. Probably between about 30 staff, I want to say we made 20 bucks in tips. What? Uh, I found myself on more than one occasion getting stuck in awkward situations between husbands, their lovers, and then the actual wife. The worst case scenario was husband and wife shared credit cards naturally, and she started seeing the hotel show up on the books, and she stormed in and like slammed bank statements down. It's like, I know my husband's here, you guys are lying to me, we have to just 
say, you know what, I'm so sorry, we don't have anyone here by, these, by this name. And uh, meanwhile, we could literally hear them having sex upstairs. The problem with working with the fabulously wealthy is that they often assume that the staff is there at their beck and call regardless of what the request is. It was really common for the high rollers to approach attractive staff members and essentially just ask them, hey, if I pay you X amount of dollars, we can meet me in my room late at night and fuck my brains out. That's a quote from someone, sadly. They'll probably do it we for the money. We had a very busty, know? gorgeous front desk woman at uh, one hotel, and someone came down and, and offered her quite a bit of money in front of management. And at the moment, she naturally declined. I uh, have security cameras in all the halls, and seeing that person sneak out around 2 a.m. was definitely a little... I mean, I don't, I'm not going to like knock the person's hustle, because the hustle is real. Things are tough. You know, and I'm never going to knock a person's hustle for trying to survive, you know, as long as... um. You're not doing absolutely despicable things to other people. But you know this mega reach and this elites them. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop at not being vanilla. It goes way deeper than that. It goes way deeper to the point that like I can't I can't even talk about it on YouTube. That's how deep it goes. Hmm. Wow. Suspicious. The most shocking example was an incident where the wedding was around 2 p.m. ish that day. Come nightfall, one of our event staff slept with the wife and ended up getting caught. It turned into quite a big deal with screaming and shouting and all this stuff. He hid in a bathroom in a supply closet until the heat died down and then he just walked into the front office and clocked out like nothing ever happened. His, uh, his mom happened to be in charge of events, so she made sure he didn't get terminated. <laughs> the demographics of the staffs who work at hotels are usually pretty evenly split. If you're an attractive white person who speaks English quite well, you're probably going to be reservations, front desk, something visual. If you're not of that ethnicity, just because they have an accent and that might not present well to your guests, your most likely bet is that you're going to get placed in housekeeping. So basically, it's kind of like slavery back in the days. Except for, except this time around, the slavery applies to all colors. All colors. But like, white is still top of the list. And like, other ethnicities fall below. And if you know what I preach in this channel, you know that Ethnicity is nonsense. It's it's not a real thing. We are literally all the same. And I'm not even talking about cut us, you know, our blood is all red. I'm literally talking about a man that is black can have sex with a woman who is black and they can have a white child and a black child. Or they can have twins and one of the cheap twins will come out black the other one will come out white and the identical twins they look exactly the same one is just black and one is just white what does that tell you it's a myth it's a myth we are literally all the same literally all the same we're just being manipulated to think otherwise so that they can use it to their advantage just like they have been black lives matter all lives matter all this nonsense shenanigans and everything just to get us to fight each other. And every time we're fighting each other and everything is chaotic, boom! That's when they take control. Same tactic. Same tactic. We just keep falling for it. But anyway, I apologize for digressing. Let's get back into it. If you're working at a decent property, you could probably get 10 to $15 an hour as a front desk host. If you're housekeeping, you're maybe getting 9 to 10 It, it was wildly unfair. We were actually advised to handle our housekeeping teams under the concept of divide and conquer. Telling them, you know, oh, well, so-and-so... What did I just say? Divide and conquer. That's, 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 the, that's, that's all they know. Like, that tactic works so well for the ignorant. It works perfectly well. Unfortunately, most of planet Earth is ignorant. <laughs> This team is much better than yours. You should really try to keep up with the Mexican team. 
It creates that toxic environment. This prevents the entire housekeeping team from uniting together and presenting concerns. And I saw that kind of model in multiple hotels. In retrospect, I can safely say that the hours they made me work, the, the wild situations you'd run into, it's a miracle that I never got in a really bad car accident in giving. It slowly burns you out in a way that you can't explain until you are out of it. You just kind of know something's wrong and you're not happy. Mm. The biggest thing that the public doesn't understand about the hotel industry is that there are wild things happening behind closed doors always every closed single doors. day. It's always Obviously, wealthy closed doors. individuals are wild. Everything happens behind closed doors of hotels. Yeah. I mean, there was no surprise there, was there? I mean, we already know what these people are all about at this point. So, I'm not even baffled at this point, you know. But anyway, I need to go. Um, everyone take care of yourselves. Please take care of yourselves. Eat healthy. Meditate. Get some sun. Get some nature, one love.